Welcome friends to another Halo Law video. Today we continue our look at the different classes within foreign society. We're going to start with the life workers. Applying the mantle that the foreigners believe in is very much centred around the life workers. There are also a class that played a key role when the foreigners came up against the flood. To give you a basic definition of the role of the life workers, we'll quote from the Halo Encyclopedia. Life workers were masters of the building blocks of life and consciousness, architects of flesh and neurons. What they can do within this role, they can extend the life of a foreigner indefinitely, bring dead worlds back to life, and they also archive entire species of creatures for analysis and replication. They would make sure the mantle was maintained, that the responsibility was held at a certain level. One of the results of this was that genetic tinkering was used to adjust certain species that were in the care of the forerunners. This took the form of brain pattern imprinting and germline modifications, so that those species would fit within the foreigner's vision of a greater good. If you were a member of these species, you would see two things from the life workers. They would be both caregiver and jailer. They could heal bodies, uplift your mind, but they could also twist people's memories so that their grand designs were met. Life workers played many different roles within foreigner society. Within their radar class, one was the role of life shaper, and the one at the forefront, the one that was best well known, was one dubbed First Light Weaves Living Song, also known as the Librarian. When the foreigners went up against the flood, the role of the Librarian was one that was in charge of collecting and indexing many species so that they would survive. It was part of a conservation measure. And once the halo was activated, these species could return to their home worlds. The hope behind this was that the species would help diverse life return and flourish in the galaxy. During the conflict, the librarian surrendered her life so that the conservation measure was a success. And we're told here, of all life workers, her efforts were most keenly applied to the humans who she came to believe were the true inheritors of the mantle, a belief that in time would prove true. Next up we have the role of caretakers and monitors that oversee the domain and its vast interfaces. They alone had the authority to look at the deeper records held there. They would spend long periods of time in deep sync with the domain and other information systems and were rarely seen in the outer world walking around. And we're told that they were hunted down by the flood and eliminated, as their work was seen as a threat in the grave of mind's success when it wanted to spread the logic plague. And after the flood roar, none remain. Next up we have those dubbed juridicals. These were lawmakers and mediators. They were there to make sure that the edict of the mantle was held to. They had proxies and agents that allowed them to spread their influence across much of the foreign empire and they would investigate activity of criminals and judge the actions of people. Because they had to enforce this uncompromising virtue, they judged other rates with a somewhat of a cynical eye to aid with their justice. They had a galaxy-wide communication and travel network so that they had a high level of autonomy. As time went by, the flood were able to cordon off this so that the logic plague could be spread. It disrupted all investigatory and judicial proceedings. Next up we have catalogers. When you entered this rate, you would give up your personal identity and history in the service of justice. They would be sent to collect evidence for legal cases at the Ecumene Council's direction. Joining this rate, you'd be taken from every other rate. You would submit to personality conditioning to root out even the barest hint of unethical conduct as a form of penance for some past crime. 
and the Hello Encyclopedia goes on to describe catalog units were locked into carapaces that moved with the assistance of five legs. The only other appendages were sensory nodes, which it could extend to scan evidence, take accounts, or compel testimony. Each catalog unit possessed a direct connection to the juridical network and its fellow units, as well as the highest levels of security access and council authority to carry out its assigned mission. Now, the next two friends are relatively short, so I'm going to read to them directly. The first one is Engineers. They were one of the few rates that made extensive use of specialised carapaces for day-to-day life. The grandest of these suits were mobile cathedrals of excess, chased with exotic mass matter and encapsulating strange machines that showcased the owner's prowess in engineering and aesthetics. The engineers' widespread disappearance from a community society left the remaining individuals within their rate in a precarious position, particularly in the view of builders who often perceived the engineers as rivals and went to great lengths to ensure that their rate ranked below that of warrior servants on the council. Then it is the role of Myrmidon. Little is known of the Myrmidons beyond the fact that they served as personal agents of the Ecumenic Council. Their missions were discreet and perilous and often took place on alien worlds and in uncharted realms, well outside the knowledge of even the Druidicals. While typically clad in distinct black and red armour, they were only, or they were the only rate outside of the life workers to have regular contact with other species. They occasionally employed biomimetic carapaces for such purposes. Most of their members and records archives were lost with the destruction of the Maithrillian. And lastly, we look to theoreticals. They pondered questions beyond the physical and were masters of unravelling the threads of causality. They could tease order from the chaos of slip space domains and grasp difficult principles with little effort. They were typically very old even for foreigners. Their rate in fact goes back to the early interstellar period of the foreigners on, on Gibald. They also had a unique connection to the domain but they pursued knowledge blindly and that came with a price. They would not compromise. So they were censured by the Ecumene Council. This destroyed their influence and their numbers. The last known theoreticals were eventually merged with the Builder Rate. The librarian's own studies led her to one ancient theoretical named Boundless, who had documented controversial truths about the origins of the foreigners, eventually leading to the life shippers' journey to Path Cathona and the discovery of the foreigners' atrocities against their makers. Boundless end came when she was forced to exile within a cryptum, which ultimately killed her due to a defect, though many believed it was no accident. And that, friends, is where I'll end today's video, and I'll look into the life workers and their rates.